All right, listen, if you aren't careful, your fears will sabotage your relationship just like mine did. Let's take anxious and avoidant attachment, for example. Let's remember, anxious attachers had inconsistent love and emotional safety growing up, so they're on high alert for any distance or disconnection in their relationships. If their partner doesn't text them back immediately, they might assume the worst and start panicking. Why? Because they have a fear that they're not aware of. To them, distance means abandonment might be around the corner. I heard someone say, Anxiously attached partners only feel as safe as their last interaction with their partner. So they're hypersensitive to any threat of disconnection, real or perceived, which means they might serve and give and overextend themselves. They sacrifice because subconsciously that decreases the chances that someone will leave them. But even while being selfless, they still have to test their partner. They don't trust whatever love they are getting. So they'll raise the bar of what you need to do to prove that you won't leave them. The only problem, no partner wants to feel like they're on trial every day. So eventually, our fear of abandonment sabotages the relationship and our partner leaves us. How about avoidant partners? Avoidantly attached people were taught by their caregivers that being vulnerable, getting close, letting someone fully in only resulted in pain. They were taught their mistakes equal rejection. So they've learned to only trust themselves, to be fully independent, don't ask for help, and definitely don't show emotions. Feelings are useless, right? They were conditioned to believe you're valuable based on your performance. Yes, they still want connection because we all do, but when they get it, they don't trust it and they'll sabotage it. Because deep down, they're afraid of being fully known. So they avoid vulnerability. They default to distance because that's what feels safe. And when there's conflict, they dismiss and invalidate because subconsciously, they think they're protecting the relationship by convincing you that they're not a bad partner. So if they could just get you to not feel those feelings, things would be fine, right? When in reality, they're destroying any connection that was there and pushing their partner farther away. And this isn't about labeling you or diagnosing your partner. This is all about us taking an honest look at our fears. Both of these insecure attachments have a fear of actually being seen, flaws and all. Both have a fear of letting the other person fully know them because sometimes we don't even know ourselves. Both have a fear of vulnerability and closeness, and both are oblivious to how their fears are negatively impacting their relationships. So let me just ask you, are you afraid of being fully known? Are you afraid of conflict? Are you afraid to be seen as a failure? Are you afraid of losing your independence? Are you afraid your partner's gonna abandon you so you give and serve and stay silent? Are you showing up as you truly are? Are you able to talk about what hurts you? Are you actually building trust and intimacy together? Because that always requires things from both of you. Intimacy can't be established alone. There are things that are required from each partner, like respect and healthy communication and self-reflection and taking accountability and being vulnerable. Being fully known by your partner and fully knowing them requires us to open up and have deep conversations about fears and needs and standards of what you will and will not tolerate and how you feel loved and valued most. Can you do that? Because I didn't realize I couldn't. And a lot of you didn't grow up with emotional safety or trust. A lot of you had terrible models of what selflessness or love looked like, didn't you? And I'm so sorry for that, but I hate the idea of someone in the past taking away the gift of a great relationship for you in the present. So let's learn, let's try, let's be brave and courageous and explore ourselves and change the relationship we have with us first, because that always changes everything else as well.